Hi, I'm Mark. This is Mark's Tech Vlogs on YouTube. And today I want to bring you a developer's review of the Apple M1 Mac Mini. Now, when I'm not making videos on YouTube, which is quite a lot of the time, I work as a full-time web developer. And for the last couple of months, I've been using the Apple M1 Mac Mini as my daily computer for developing. This means it gets used for writing code for websites and apps around kind of seven to eight hours a day and even some weekend stuff. And I realize in talking about a development perspective, there's a whole variety of things that, that might include. So let me just tell you very quickly about the stack that I tend to use on a daily basis. Now, I quite often use a local development server just to run PHP and MySQL locally for quick development, but I also sync things up using GitHub to our remote repositories. In terms of languages, I use a whole variety of things, but I tend to use a lot of PHP and MySQL using WordPress. On top of that, I also use React and React Native for apps. And then I also use, of course, HTML and CSS and SAS. And then within all of that, as you'd expect, I use compilers, so things like Parcel.js and Babel and Webpack. And so in this video, I'm gonna talk about my experience of using a Mac Mini for all of those things to develop over the last couple of months. And I wanna start off by talking about why I went for the Mac Mini rather than one of the other M1 Macs. So for me, what I needed was something that was portable that I could take to our office and back, but I didn't need something with a screen. Now the Mac Mini's size still makes it super portable. And one of the great things about the Mac Mini is that in terms of kind of Mac for your money, you get the most out of any of Apple's products. So let's talk about spec and the design of the Mac Mini. So the design of the Mac Mini hasn't really changed for a long time. It's rounded, it's silver, and it looks pretty cool. It's also quite small, which actually makes it really easy just to put into a carry case and take to work. The front of the device has a power light, and then at the back you find all of your ports. And the Mac Mini has a lot of ports for an Apple product these days. It's got two USB ports, it's got two USB-C ports, it's got a HDMI out, it's got an audio out and it's got a power button. There's also the vent on the back for a fan. Now, one of the things with the M1 Max is that the spec you get when you buy it is the spec you're stuck with. You can't upgrade the RAM or the memory. With that in mind, and as someone who uses a lot of things like node packages, I decided I needed a lot of memory. This meant that I really maxed out the Mac Mini and I went for the full two terabytes of internal memory and I went for the 16 gigabyte of RAM. For me, part of that was about future-proofing because I tend to use my machines for a long time. And so let's talk about the rest of the spec. So the Mac Minis have the eight core Apple M1 processor. This is the first generation of Apple's own silicon inside a computer. Although of course we know that they've been running them on their phones and their tablets for years. It comes in two configurations of RAM. You can get eight gigabytes or 16 gigabytes. And I recommend going for the 16 if you can be doing anything more heavy duty. It supports up to two displays so you can run one from the USB-C port and one from the HDMI port. It has a built-in speaker, and it's also got built-in Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5. And then in terms of weight, it weighs just 1.2 kilograms. In the box itself, you get the Mac Mini, you get a power cable, and then you get all your instructions and an Apple sticker. One of the really nice things about the Mac Mini is that a power cable is a standard figure of eight cable. This means you can easily get another one for about a fiver on Amazon and keep one in your office and keep one at home if you are gonna be moving it between places. And then in terms of the operating system, it comes with the latest Apple OS, which is Big Sur. So let's talk about usage. And I'm gonna talk about a whole variety of uses, but I am gonna try and focus on development. And one of the reasons that people have perhaps been a little bit hesitant to go for the Mac is because much like when Apple moved from PowerPC to Intel a long time ago, there is some compatibility things that people were worried about. Luckily, Apple has spent a lot of time thinking about this. And so actually at the moment, compatibility seems to be really good. And I've not run into anything that can't run on my M1 Mac. So if we talk about daily usage, it's really impressive. You've probably seen the videos where people click an app and it loads instantly. And I've got to say, once you're using it on a day-to-day -day basis, that just isn't really realistic. However, what I will say is that apps do load very quickly. It's not quite instant for more intensive apps, but it's certainly pretty close to. For me, I find that things like Visual Studio Code load instantly, and then things like Affinity Designer take a little bit longer. Essentially, the more intensive your app is, the longer it's gonna to take to load. But even the more intensive apps like things like Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro still load so much quicker than they did on my old Mac. There's also a lot less lag when you're using the app, and so you very, very rarely see that color wheel that spins around. One of the non-development apps I use for stuff like this is Final Cut Pro X, and trying to edit 4K video in real time is really impressive. 
You simply just drag your 4K file in and then you can go through it and watch it and it just renders in real time. Video editing is really easy to do on this Mac and exporting doesn't take too long either. I've already talked about a few bits of development, but let's talk about the development side of using this Mac. So my main code editor is Visual Studio Code with a load of extensions, and I have found that this loads pretty much instantly every time, and that all of my extensions work with the M1 Mac Mini. I use Git to sync my repositories up to our remote server a lot of the time, and then I also use things like local for local WordPress development. As an aside, I also have a couple of PHP files that run in the background every so often on my Mac that just do things like check my Amazon wishlist prices. This was a slightly geeky project just to automate some of the things that I wanted to know about with price reductions. And then as you'd expect, I use a lot of different node commands for compiling stuff and for installing different packages. One of the big things I've found is when you download a repository and run npm install, it just happens so much quicker than it used to on my old Mac. And then the other stuff I use for local development is I use Strapi sometimes as a content management system. This works really quickly and runs really quickly in terminal when I need it to. And then I also use React Native and Expo for hot reloading apps. As part of that, I quite often use the Xcode simulator for Apple device simulation, and I find that this loads pretty much instantly as well. This is particularly impressive given that Xcode used to basically kill my old Mac, but on this Mac it has no problems at all. The same goes when it comes to Android Studio and Android simulators, which I don't use very often, but when I do need to use an Android simulator, it loads a lot quicker than it did on my old machine as well. I think for me, the big thing that I've noticed since using the M1 Mac for development is that my productivity has increased and my frustrations with speed have certainly decreased. This machine can handle a whole load of multitasking without even you hearing the fan. On top of that, at the end of the day, you can pick it up and it's barely warm. There's a lot of talk at the beginning of the M1 Max about compatibility, but I think all of those issues seem to have gone away, or they certainly have for the stack that I use. I think one of the things to address is to say that for home working, there is certainly an elephant in the room with the Mac Mini in that it doesn't have a built-in camera. What you can do, however, is use something like Camo Studio to use your smartphone as a camera. The only downside that I found of the Mac Mini, and this really is the only downside for me, is that the built-in speaker is absolutely awful. I'm not quite sure why Apple put in such a bad speaker, but they did. What this means in practice is that it's fine for video calls when you need to hear other people because it does pack a bit of volume. However, if you want to listen to music, you're certainly going to need some external speakers. So as a developer, is the Mac Mini a worthwhile upgrade? For me, as someone coming from a Mac that was quite a few years old, the answer is a resounding yes. The Mac Mini gives you the best value out of Apple's range, it runs really fast and it looks pretty good as well. It also has the advantage over the M1 Air and the M1 Pro that it's got a lot more ports. This means you're not constantly reaching for dongles. And then finally, I found that there's no issues with writing code on the M1 Mac. And then even for non-coding hobbies, which I haven't talked about in this video, but things like Logic Pro for producing music, Final Cut, which I have talked about a bit for producing video, and then just things like word processing and emails, it just works really well. All in all, for the first generation Apple Silicon, this is really impressive and it's going to be really exciting to see where Apple take the speed of this stuff in the future. But for now, I think this is going to last for many years to come. If you guys have got any questions, do stick them below and I'll try and answer those. If you want to pick one up, I have put a link below as well and that's an affiliate link so if you buy through that, it will help this channel out and it'll help me to keep making videos. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. Please consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you guys again soon.